I'll meet students whose parents don't believe they can make money being an artist. I appear to say, not true. You can definitely make money being an artist. I, I manage a bunch of them. What's up everyone, I'm Sir Wade. Welcome back, nice to see you. Today's interview is with Angela Lupito. I'll let her introduce herself in the video, but she's got a ton of experience and she has a lot of great information. So stick around, hear the insights, and I hope it's helpful. If you enjoyed this interview, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss more coming soon and leave any future video requests or interview ideas in the comments below. Enjoy. My name is Angela Lupito and I am the department manager for the story department and for the art department at DreamWorks Animation. And I've been here 13 years. So quite a time, quite a long time. That is a long time. Mm -hmm. More than half the company time. That's right. Yeah. Let's start with the departments, arts and story and all that. Mm -hmm. What, so most of the people watching are aspiring to get into those places, um, either from what it's like to work here to the hiring, like what, what kinds of things would you want to inform them or let them know that they should keep in mind as they go towards that goal? I'd say that one of the key things when we look for story artists, and even biz dev artists too, is your portfolio. It really comes down to can you do the work. Um, it, it's less about which program you went to or where you're from. or It really comes down to can you do the work. I think one of the challenges we have, though, is that with the visa situation, we are pretty much limited to people who are, um, can get a visa, who are either citizens or can get a visa. And that's not our doing. That's just the way it is. Um, for a variety of reasons. But yeah, the main thing is that you, you have the ability to do the work. And when we look at people who are coming in right out of school, we definitely look for people who have potential. So our expectation is that um, you will grow in the role. So uh, I, I'd say that that's really the thing, is looking at the work, looking at your portfolio, do you have work that relates to feature animation? What's, what are some of the things as in your role, like what, what does it mean to be a department manager at a place like this? And so the role of the department manager is basically like an internal agent. So at a lot of the studios of the, the scale of ours and others, you'll have someone like myself whose role it is to you know, uh, work with the department overall. So you will, um, if you're an artist on one show and you're kind of winding down, I'm helping to figure out what you could do next. What other shows could you work on? What other shows are you interested in? Um, what other shows are you a good match for? And then in addition to just the, you know, going from show to show, the other responsibility of department managers or artist managers is to ensure that the person is growing. That's really it. Like, you know, this is a um, constantly changing um, industry. And even in art and story where a lot of the basics are, of course, the fundamentals and all of them are really the same, there's still growth opportunity either to become a leadership, you know, in a leadership role or if it's to become better at, let's say, cinematography or a better drafts person or whatever that thing is. My job is to help facilitate that and make sure that all of the artists are growing. And I think that's one of the joys about working at this company is there's an expectation that you will grow, which is great. So, You've grown in your career through your 13 years here. Do you want to talk a bit about how you got to where you got in and then where you've gone from since you've been here? Sure. When I started, I came into the studio to work in production. And then soon thereafter, I worked in development. And then soon thereafter that, I worked in recruiting for university level recruiting. Then I was in, brought back into the education team and worked in that for many years. So I've had a taste of a little bit of everything. Um, I think most of my growth has been, some of it's about timing and luck, being in the right place at the right time. I mean, that's always the case for the entertainment industry. It really is, some, there's a part of it you have no control over, which is timing. Um, there's the part where, um, you know, I always joke that, you know, working with people is, you know, do people want to work with you? And I think that by demonstrating that, it opens a lot of doors. So because this whole medium is completely collaborative and a team sport. So if you're difficult to work with, then that really, it, it becomes harder and harder for you, I think, to find opportunity. But if you are a good partner and you can communicate with people and you enjoy the work and you love working, you know, in various, um, you know, when it's crazy or when it's slow, I think that the opportunity kind of finds you. 
Um, I do believe that you should sort of have intentions for what your interests are. But in my career, I have not said to myself, I want to be the director of blah, blah, blah. Like, I've never thought that. I didn't even know that was a job. So I never had that like, thought. That. I just knew that um, I really enjoyed working with artists. And that in whatever capacity I was in, that job, there had to be a component of my job that was that. So, so I've, I feel like I've been very fortunate and be, been given amazing opportunities by leadership of this company who were here before and who are here now um, that got me to, you know, have all these experiences, which is a culmination of 13 crazy years. So, yeah. yeah. Let's see. One thing that I can, I have no insight on that mm -hmm. a lot of, not a ton of the viewers are females at the moment. Yeah. But I don't think there's enough people talking about what it means to be a female doing this, and that's probably oh, why sure. there aren't people watching it, because they don't know they can do it, and right. so on. So This is one of my passions, because I, um, I am grateful to be involved in women in animation. And I think when I first started in the industry, it was clear it was still very much a male-dominated industry. And you know this was like almost 25 years ago. So I didn't really think much about it, other than that was the way it was. Cut to today, and it's pretty much the same, and it shouldn't be, and it is evolving. I, I think that, you know, it's definitely, we've seen a lot of changes in the schools in terms of the number of women that are pursuing careers in animation or computer science. Um, we are actively working to figure out how to bring in more women into the studio, and not just in production roles, like we've always been great about that. Um, and I have to say, this studio has been amazing at giving female directors opportunity. So it's not like there's been none, but we definitely could do better, we could all do better. So I'm grateful that um, I get to be involved both in my own job, but also you know, just as an advocate for women in general is that you know, we need to bring more creative voices to the table. And it's not just about women, it's just about diversity. You, know? you wanna have a variety of stories and backgrounds and ways of figuring out how to do things and that is, you know, if you have all the same people from the same program in the same part of the country, you're not going to get that. So I definitely think it's important. And I'm grateful that this company, our, our, our larger company, is also really keen on that. Um, it's a good time to be in animation. There's a huge amount of work. And a lot of, a lot of new companies out there, um, a lot of films that want to get made. So. So I feel like it's a good time. But yeah, in terms of being a woman in the industry, it's a good time because you can, you're starting to see more people advocating for that and, and bringing more people into the process. Um, but there's still a gap there. So there's still work to do. Do you happen to know anything, whether it's just encouragement or otherwise, that like can, can anything, can people watching do anything to at least help go that direction? I mean, from a, like a, if, if, if I'm a female and I'm interested in animation? Or? Both. Like if, like if there's a guy who's like, yeah, I really agree with that. Like, right. is there like, it's more of just like a vocalizing that, right? Yeah, I think, well, one of the ways you can help is obviously vocalize it, yeah. Um, there are ways you can influence and then there are ways that are out of our control, right? Like at the end of the day, the right person to lead a project or direct something is the right person. Like it's, it doesn't, it has nothing to do with that. But I think what we want to make sure is we're giving enough opportunity to people. And again, I think we've done a good job of that here. Um, I mean, you know, Jen U. Nelson is amazing, you know, and, and our first film was directed by, you know, Brenda Chapman and Steve Hickner and Simon Wells. So our very first film, you know, so I feel like um, that we've done a good job. But um, in terms of taking action, yes, uh, advocating for it, um, I think if you're if you are so fortunate to be in a leadership role where you can where you're hiring or you're a hiring manager and you can look at the the crew you have or the opportunities you have, you know, being mindful of giving people an opportunity, whether or not they get the job or not, should be based on are they the right fit. But making sure that we've done due diligence to give people the opportunity, you know, um, you know, and getting active within the community itself. I think part of it you sort of reference this is. Um, most people in college have no idea what jobs there are. They think, I want to be an animator. 
and that's the only job they know about. And it makes sense because, you know, your program might be limited or you might be small or, you know, you're new and you don't realize, like, the breadth of jobs in our business. So I think as people in the industry, there's a bit of a responsibility to communicate that to schools to say, you know, definitely at the college level, but ideally at the high school level as well, to say, wow, you, yeah, you could direct a movie someday. I mean, it might take forever because <laughs> animation takes forever. But, you know, you, you know, there are jobs, you know, as a surfacer or as a painter or as a lighter, all these, you know, effects artists, just to, ex to um, expose people to the breadth of the type of work that's out there. I think that's one thing. And I think that's a little bit on us. And we really have done a you know, decent job of it. I think we could always do better. Um, but I feel like it's something that we put effort into. Um, there's obviously the challenge of how many of, our, are there of us versus how many can go out and have those ki types of talks. Um, but stuff like this is good. I mean, you, you basically say, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity. And to be frank, there's opportunity in every aspect in any given studio. I mean, we don't just have artists and we don't just have producers. We have, we have accountants, we have people in legal, we have people in marketing, people in music, like every, pretty much every type of job. I mean, so it's not even just limited to those jobs. There's kind of every kind of job. Yeah. How would, do you know any ways, like uh, this is something I struggle with, is trying to find like ways to, because I always say like, oh, like, look at all the things, but like, where do you send them to like learn all that, to like figure out like what different opportunities are besides just the job postings? Right. You mean in terms of actual jobs or types of jobs? Yeah, I mean, either one, just like what opportunities could there be that they could try and see if like, oh, well, that'd, be a, that'd be an interesting fit. Sure. I feel like, you know, the things that I tell people to go check out are um, certainly art of books. So if you said to me, I want to work in feature animation specifically, then I would say, you know, I would pick up a few art of books for any movie that you're a fan of and just read up on it. I mean, not... Not all the books really get into detail about the jobs, but you get a sense of the breadth of the work. So I think that's one way to get um, a sense of it. I mean, of course, I would also advocate for people reading The Illusion of Life, but that's, you know, and, and a lot of those jobs are still there in the same. So there's that. But, you know, there are conferences where you can learn more about the jobs, and you can get involved in those conferences as a, as a student. So the big one, of course, for the graphics side is SIGGRAPH. They have a great student volunteer program, and m many people here, you know, grew up and went through their programs. So I definitely would advocate for that. And then through that, you learn, you meet people, and then you, you get to participate in the conferences at some level, so you get exposure to talks and information about different jobs and companies. On the other end of the spectrum, um, locally we have the Animation Expo, which happens in November. And you know it literally is a who's who of animation. So if you're a student, you can get involved or attend, and you really can find out... Um, you know, the, the types of jobs. They also just launched a TV channel of some sort, so I haven't had a chance to look at it yet, but I know Tina put together something. So they have content online. Um, then there are schools, um, not just on the collegiate level, but there are schools that professionals take classes at as well, and you kind of get exposure to stuff that way, or just look at their curriculums, and it kind of is telling, like Noman, like um, Concept Design Academy, like... Um, Art Center has classes on Saturdays, like so you can kind of dig around and look and kind of see where there are different types of classes, and that I think can be really revealing. Um, I mean, if you find that you know you you like an artist, you can go down the rabbit hole of finding blogs to blogs to blogs, and you can find some information that way as well. Um, but I think now more than ever, there's a ton of information out there. There used to be like three books, you know, that were the books. You know, it was Don Graham's Composing Pictures, The Illusion of Life, and like Richard uh, Williams' like anima Animator's Toolkit. Like those, yeah. You know, there were some more, but those were kind of the things. Now there's like all, a million books and tons of online content. It's almost overwhelming. Um, so the, the information's out there. You just kind of have to pursue it. Awesome. Yeah. Do you have any final thoughts for... Anything you'd like to share? Mm. Yes. Final thought I'd like to share is I've encountered this over the years, especially when I was a recruiter. I'll meet students whose parents don't believe they can make money being an artist. I'm here to say, not true. You can definitely make money being an artist. I, I manage a bunch of them. <laughs> it's not impossible. And I'm not saying it's not hard, but it's not impossible. And you definitely can make a good living. Um, I think people go into art programs with some sense of fear that there's no opportunity. Um, 
when you go through college, I think you cannot rely on the school to get you a job. That's not their job. Their job is to educate you. It's your job to get a job. And so you have to be an active per participant in that. So it's not just like, I graduated, I'm not done, where's my job? Like, that's not how it works. You have to pursue it. It's on you. And you have to demonstrate that you can do the work, and that's on you. So you really have to be active. So you can definitely allay your parents' fears that you can make money being an artist, but you can't just do that because you graduated from somewhere. You have to demonstrate that you are capable of doing the work. And at the end of the day, if you find that maybe you're not capable of doing the work, but you love the work, maybe look into other roles that, you know, you could do that support the work. So, you know, I think people graduate from art schools and probably realize like, oh, wow, I'm not as good as I thought I would be. Or maybe, maybe I really just want to do this as a hobby and I don't want to do it as a job. That's cool. You could still get a job in the arts and be around it all day. And in some ways... Those folks are amazing because they have empathy for the artist that they're working with. They're like, oh, I know how hard this is, you know? So I think if you really want to work in animation, I think it's possible. But, the, but at the end of the day, it's kind of on you to prove that you want it and that you have the abilities and you've worked hard and you've put together a portfolio that can demonstrate that you have the chops to, to do the work required. And, and one more thought. I know when you're in school, wherever you are, you're sort of in a bubble. Because you just you're exposed to the people around you, you're, so you're comparing yourself to the people you know in the class you know ahead of you or behind you or in your class. Those aren't the people you're competing against. Most likely, you're competing with everybody else out there. So I would I would recommend that you um, look at other programs or other student film festivals or whatever to kind of see what the work is out there because you might find yourself comparing to people on, in, in your world when in reality, like, the skills out there are actually broader than what you've been exposed to. So you don't want to get in a situation where you're like, well, I thought if I just modeled that one thing, that would be it. No. <laughs> the guy over at that school modeled that, that, and that, and that's on his, on his reel, and that's who you're competing against, you know. So you have to be mindful of the fact that it's not just the people that you're surrounded by that um, you're competing for, for for jobs at the studios or at companies. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. well, thank you for joining. My pleasure. And maybe we'll have you on again one day. Happy to do it anytime. I hope you enjoyed that interview. If you've got more follow-up questions on anything you heard today, leave them in the comments. I can either answer them or I can use them in a kind of bigger Q&A if I don't have all the answers. But either way, I have a bunch more great interviews and content coming out soon. So if you don't want to miss more like this, don't forget to subscribe or check out the channel for other stuff you might be interested in. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.